Hello there. A little while ago, a YouTuber called Scalagrim put out a video talking about sword fighting with one eye. I thought I'd talk about this, as this is an area in which I have some experience. I have a condition wherein, despite both my eyes functioning, my brain has been trained to ignore the signals from my left eye. What this means is that my left eye acts like peripheral vision, wherein, unless I shut my good eye and focus, I can only make out moving shapes and vague colors. I tried to represent this in a Photoshop image, but it didn't really work out. As with peripheral vision, it's not so much that the image is blurry as it is that it's unimportant. To see what I mean, here's a test you can do. Pick up a book, and while your eyes are focused on the leftmost word, try and read the right page. You can tell there are words there, but you don't have a clue what they could be. So I'm not blind in one eye, but I don't see out of it either, if that makes any sense. So, all that being said, let's talk about some of the ways I get around the shortcomings of my vision. One thing I do is that I never face things directly, I always face them at a slight angle. So that instead of my vision being obscured on the left side, I only lose a few degrees on each side. I was doing some thinking back to my fencing days, trying to think of how it might be different to normal people. And I think the best way to describe it might be that it's like looking at the world through a camera lens, or maybe like a first-person video game. If we're going to use that metaphor, though, we're going to need a different aspect ratio. So, other than the reduced field of view, the biggest difference is a loss of depth perception. Because my brain doesn't work properly, I don't have binocular vision, so I have to rely on other methods of depth perception. These other methods work, particularly when you've had a lifetime to get used to them, but they aren't quite as good as binocular vision. Some things are easier than others. For example, when winding up for a sword swing, you can easily see the length of the sword and estimate how far out it would go from my body. Your brain makes all these calculations automatically. Thrusts are a lot more difficult. When the blade comes in at an angle or does some movement through the air, you can judge the distance using the aforementioned estimation, or you can compare how the blade moves relative to the background. When the blade comes in at a direct angle, you're blind, though. You just can't see it moving, and you have to guess based on body language where it's going to be. This isn't usually too big an issue, as blades almost always come in at some sort of angle. But every so often, I'd just get hit, bam, square in the chest by something I couldn't see, much less defend against. There was this one fellow at my class, an ice-cold fencer, a perfect form. I had so much trouble with him because his moves were so precise, and I couldn't see them. This sort of thing colored the way I fenced. Normally, I try to keep a little bit more distance than usual between myself and my opponents, darting in and out so that my opponent doesn't have the same chance to just go bam without me seeing it. I'd also rely on a lot of simple tricks and nonsense, stuff that people wouldn't know how to deal with in their precise form, or stuff that would just irritate them enough to make mistakes. I also tended to favor the bind, because you don't need to judge distance in the bind. This is all outlier stuff, though. Most of the time I didn't have a problem with depth perception. It was only those people with perfect form and good reflexes, or else those with really long arms, that I had trouble. 90% of the time it was a non-issue. I'd like to talk about some of the other ways in which you can judge depth without binocular vision. One of them is that you can see how I move relative to what's behind me. You can see how my arm moves relative to my torso. Another thing you can do is you can see the amount of ground between you and your opponent, and judge based on that. Another thing you can do is you can move your head and see how that changes things. Notice how when I move the camera, the monitor and the wall behind it shift at different rates in the field of view. And notice how despite this image of the muskrat technically being all in the same plane, the video still has some depth because you're using the aforementioned techniques subconsciously. One final limitation that's worth mentioning is that only one of the hands is in line with the good eye. Because of this, accuracy with my offhand is just bloody terrible. Being able to fence with your left hand is really useful when you come up against a left-handed fencer. Left-handed fencers are tricky under the best of circumstances, because they do everything backwards, but they tend to be almost completely useless at fencing their own kind. This is an advantage that I'm unable to fully capitalize on. So, in summary, fencing with one eye is a bit like fencing through a screen with a 5-4 aspect ratio. There are some disadvantages, but nothing you can't work around. That's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.